Live from the City of Angels here on this Sunday night, you are watching Midnight Movie Talk, coast to coast, around the globe. Is the world going to end tomorrow? We'll talk about that later on MMT Gets Freaky, but we do need to, of course, stick with the world of cinema to start, and we are going to start with CinemaCon. I'm not going. I kind of wish that I had, because I could stay with Menzel. Menzel goes over to Vegas quite a bit, and I can hang out with him. He's one of my better friends. I th he's probably my best buddy in the space. I like Scott a lot. He knows it. If he's watching, he knows it. We have a bro crush on each other. But listen, I didn't go because I'm lazy. <laughs> I want to watch these movies down the street at AMC Burbank. And a question comes here. What are we going to get this week? We know we're getting trailers for Maxine. We're getting trailer, which is going to be unbelievable. I mean, you talk about a movie I can't wait to see. Are you kidding me? A movie set in the 80s in the world of X? I love X. Better than Pearl. They're both cool, but X is just, I think it's a horror classic, right? And this film sounds like exactly what I want. Right in my wheelhouse. So, yes, Maxine this week. Then Joker, too. That'll be coming on Tuesday. It's going to be a busy week. So what will we see at CinemaCon? Let's look at the website. There's not a whole lot going on there. They do mention if we hit the schedule that we're going to get on Tuesday another screening of The Fall Guy. We've already had those, though. So that's kind of like, yeah, been there, done that. I still think Fall Guy is going to outperform. I saw somewhere today 20 to 40 million. What? No, 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 no. It's way over 40. Way over. I'm going to put it closer to 50, 60 on that opening weekend. Assuming that the average moviegoer loves it as much as a lot of these critics have, there's some that don't love it as much. I think I'm going to dig the film. I love Leech. I love both stars. I am a Ryan Gosling, you know, again, man crush. Not going to lie. Have to admit that. Full disclosure. And I think that that film will do extremely well. And especially if audiences love it, I have a feeling they will. So what are you looking at? Okay, so let's look at the release schedule because that's what I was trying to figure out. Remember, you go back to CinemaCon, one of the big films debut there was Top Gun Maverick, which was like, oh, my God. And remember the word of mouth, and we all know what happened to Top Gun Maverick, almost $1.5 billion worldwide. So as you look now as the schedule, let me make it a little bigger, and I'm going to tell you what's going to debut this week. No question we're going to get challengers there. I'm going to see challengers, at least to my knowledge, I'm going to see challengers on Tuesday. So I'll have – a reaction either live or I'll do a tight little reaction. I think tomorrow I'm going to do a live reaction to Cine uh, Civil War. That is in IMAX tomorrow. If you do not have your tickets, go get those for the IMAX sneak preview of Civil War. We'll do that tomorrow night live, just Civil War. But I think Challengers for sure is probably going to be shown over in Vegas on Tuesday because we're seeing it here on Tuesday uh, in L.A. That means it's they love to do that. They love to pump the word of mouth out on the same simultaneously, right? Wherever it's being shown, Vegas and LA and likely New York, let's get the word out on Challengers. And remember, Challengers has like an IMAX release on it. It's like, what? It does not look like an IMAX film. But we're going to talk in a moment about the importance of IMAX. Great article in THR. We'll go over that, how key that is. Those PLF screens we talk about all the time. If you missed it this morning on MMT, you know, you still had Godzilla Kong having all those PLF screens, and that is a benefit for any film. And going forward, we just need more IMAXs. We'll talk about that coming up as well. I think Fall Guy, obviously, we're getting that. I think you're going to get Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes this week. You're going to see the first screening of that in Vegas. I don't think there's any question. Remember, these films are done. These are in May. These films are ready to go. They're not putting final touches on this. This stuff should be ready to go and out the door, and as such, you're going to get that. Maybe Back to Black, I have a screening of that coming up in the near future. That's the Amy Winehouse movie, Strangers Chapter 1. I bet we get that. That's a horror film that should be done. Shouldn't be any kind of real major post on that. Furiosa, Outside Shot. That's late May, but remember, we got Top Gun Maverick at CinemaCon two years ago, and that came out late May. Same thing for Furiosa. Could we see that thing debut this week? There's a possibility. Beyond that, doubtful, because once we get into June, you know, you're talking about a bike riders and Inside Out 2, obviously could, but I don't think that's too little too far. That could be still getting cleaned up. Quiet Place Day 1, 
doubtful. And then you start talking about Deadpool Wolverine as much as I would love to see that film screen early and find out how great it is. I think it's going to be really fun. I mean, how can it not be? How can this film be anything other than at least three out of four stars? Or in my scale, 8.5 out of 10. Right? 85%. That's a solid B. It has to be that. So if it goes above that, then we're talking about something that's even more exciting and a bigger number, and I'm telling you it's a billion-dollar film. How is Deadpool Wolverine not a billion-dollar film? Forget about the MCU and chaos and nobody cares about comic book movies. It's Deadpool, it's Wolverine, it's Jackman, it's Reynolds you're talking about. Man, come on. Everybody wants to see it. I want to see it. I'm excited to see it. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm more excited to see Maxine, but I still want to see both films. What I don't want to watch is Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. We've done it so many times, man. How many more times we got to do this shit? This is like Godzilla and Kong. It's just something I've done too many times. Go back. Look at Monkey Man. God, that film sucks ass. I hate Monkey Man. Monkey Man might be my most hated movie of the year by the time this year ends. I don't care if Deb Patel directed it and and all the bullshit about, look, but it's representation. Shut the fuck up about your representation shit. Representation's cool, but it's not the reason you recommend a film. What the hell? Like, why are you that person that even does that? That's weird, man. The film is good or it's not. You don't even need to mention the representation. It's great, fantastic, cool. But it's not why I'm making a movie for representation. I'm going to make a movie that's badass. And if we happen to get representation in there because it's organic with the film, then boom, we have a great film. I'm not going to say, oh, it's great because of Rashad. Shut up. Shut the fuck up. So tired of these people. They're so boring. Don't be one of those people. They're incredibly boring people. Do not do that. But that said... This is what I love. This is what you get out of MMT. Oh, what? my recommendation this week is a movie called Femme. We're going to talk about in a few moments. It's about a drag queen and set in the gay underground in the UK. I assume it's London. I don't It really never makes any mention, but I assume it is. It's a cool film. So, hello. Yeah, there we go. But you know what? The film's not about representation. The film's good. It happens to deal with representation, but it's not why it's good. Do you see, guys? It's not hard. This shit is not hard. But the problem is we have so many broken people out there that instantly go up with, oh, it's woke, so it's great, or it's not, or it's woke and it's terrible, right? Two sides of that. I don't like either side. I like to pick it apart as we go individual. The project, it's it's each individual thing. It's not everything woke's bad, everything anti-woke's not. No, 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 no. And we're going to talk about Sydney Sweeney, by the way. Did she kill woke culture? Interesting article. That's coming up. So I think that's what we're looking at for CinemaCon. I would expect to see a lot of these May films make their debut this week. And that's under the assumption they're at least decent. If they have a dog in there, they're not going to show it early. Because if you did that, then that would be bad, right? That's not a good uh, precedent to set when you have a crap film like Monkey Man. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, this is this film, the more I think about Monkey Man, the, the angrier I get. That is, uh, it, w- it will be by far one of the most overrated, oh my God, films of, of, of a decade. I, oh, I, oh, it might be a franchise. I pray it's not. I'm glad this film only made $10 million this weekend. I am thrilled. I am celebrating. I'm doing victory laps around Burbank because this film is not good. And I'm telling you right now, Monkey Man when you look at it, let me pull it up real quick. Let's let's I was going to I was going to hold off, but I'm going to go on my Monkey Man meltdown right now. This is the film that will break people's career. If you think Monkey Man is a stellar directorial debut, I got news for you and I just got a DM from someone who's really smart and they were like, "Oh my god, what is going on with Monkey Man?" How in the hell do these people think that this is some kind of directorial debut that we're supposed to be like, this is, oh oh my God, this is to be lauded. This is possibly maybe one of the best films. Guys, I'm telling you right now, these are the kind of films that destroy your credibility. Monkey Man is at the very best a marginal film. At its best. At its worst, it is... Pain 
fully directed. It is nasty in spirit. And I'm telling you right now, Dev Patel didn't show me shit in that movie. Not shit. I like him, but not as a director. This film, do not be on the wrong side of history with Monkey Man. You will be sorry. <laughs> Femme is cool. We'll talk about it in a minute. But isn't that the beauty of MMT? As soon as I go off on woke culture and all this stuff, I turn around and say our movie of the week is Femme. And they, oh my God, I don't know. My head's going to fucking explode. I don't know what to do with this guy. How about you realize that the way you do this fucking shit is that you bring it through the lens of objectivity and what the film offers. You don't go into it going, it's woke, it's anti-woke, it's anti You guys, either side of that aisle, you have nothing to offer. Literally, you're offering so little. There are things, don't get me wrong, that have been, quote, woke that have been destroyed. But if that's all you do, if that is your ca- your calling card, every time, ah, this is bad, this is bad. Look at Gore, everything, because he knows it's views. It's views, it's views, it's views. I'm going to just hammer this shit. I mean, sh- first of all, I told you guys, Gore is a terrible film critic. He might be as bad as Zach Pope. It's Gore and Zach Pope, one and one A, as far as terrible film critics. One is not real. The other one doesn't really know what he's talking about. <laughs> well, they both don't. <laughs> I know. Listen, I'm sorry. It is what it is. I, I didn't even know what I was going to do tonight. I was sitting around. So today was a crazy day. Uh, I went down and played beach volleyball for the first time in a long time. So I told you guys I jacked my neck up. So I was out there playing with, I'm talking, we got like 30 plus people. It's crazy down there. Okay. And so that's one of the things I do and I haven't done in a while. And I would like play for five hours. So I'm kind of beat today. And then I go, you know what? Let's just turn the camera on and just shoot. Yeah, CinemaCon. Let's talk about Sydney Sweeney destroying woke culture. Let's talk about film, a movie I saw last night. Let's do all these weird things. That's what we do. Let's talk about the world ending because why not? Right? Why not? If aliens are not real, what is <laughs> Bob Dole? Welcome back. That's a good one. She is. Her eyes could not be further spaced apart. Could they? I used to listen to this when I was a kid. My parents still have it, I believe. I had an ornament that was a bear, and it was one of these things you bought at the country fair. And the eyes, you know, the glue-on googly eyes, whoever put them on there were like, (laughs) I got to find it, and I'll bring it on the show. I'm going to have my mom mail it to me. Wide-eyed bear. Whoever glued the eyes on, put them all the way on the side. (laughs) And every year we'd stick this wide-eyed Anya Taylor Joy bear on the tree. <laughs> Cuz the eyes were glued too far apart. Oh my god, I don't even know what to tell you this channel is. I don't have an answer for it. Beavis and Butthead live action. Oh god, don't make a swiper stop. Stop trying to resurrect these old things and then bring them back like you want to you want to do Popeye. Just just let them go. I don't want to listen. I actually enjoyed Beavis and Butthead. Actually, someone brought in the comments a few weeks ago, if not like recently, about Daria. I like Daria. Daria was cool, right? That was a cool show. I watched it a lot. That could be done. I think that's a film I'd rather see than Beavis and Butthead. Beavis and Butthead, kind of one note, Daria had a lot of layers to it. And I just really dug that show. It was like 90s, wasn't it? Was it like mid to late 90s on Daria? So that's a possibility. But for me, I just want to see new stories. If we talk about Femme here in a little bit, there's a new story. You talk about Ambulance, I almost said Ambulance City, which is actually maybe better than Asphalt City. You look at a film like that that's new. You know, I don't know these characters. I don't know this world. That's what I want to see. You know, I go back to a tar and, you know, let's just go ahead. Since we're talking about tar, let's just do it. I'm. This is one of these free flow you know, who gives a shit kind of show. So just let me do what I want to do. Don't try and stop me. I'll use your comments, but I'm not going to be held back by some kind of box that you have to put me in. God knows we've never subscribed to that theory. Okay, here we go. Let's show you. This is going to be, nah, where'd it go? I had composers reacting to Kate Blanchett. And for some reason I saved it somewhere weird. Instead, I'm going to have to show you another planet in the sky. That's going to kill us all. (laughs) <laughs> but seriously i'll show you the cape line in a minute if you think about can we just again we're moving all over the place think about this eclipse tomorrow and we'll do the full-on mmt gets freaky at the end of the show the eclipse is kind of creeping me out isn't it you i think that's what's going on here tonight too is that i feel the power 
of whatever's coming tomorrow. And I'll tell you, the authorities seem to think something big's coming. A state of emergency issued across the United States for at least a path of this eclipse, which goes right up through Texas and very near Ohio, my home state. What's going to happen? I mean, I assume nothing. But why are they acting like something crazy is going to happen? Here's my theory, and then we'll talk about it later. I'm going to show you the truth. Because I showed it to you last week on MMT. It's freaky. Now I'll make you watch it. I think tomorrow, and then we'll get back into the movies. I think tomorrow, when this eclipse happens, something's going to be visible in the sky that you have not been able to see before. And if you think about that for a moment, okay, without saying what what it is, I'll show you later. I think that that would mess people up, wouldn't it? Think about this, okay? If you, we talk about it all the time, is that if you think that your world is X, Y, Z, and then all of a sudden you have, you look up and you go, what the, what, excuse me, why is that there? And why wasn't I not told about this? You don't think there's going to be a reaction? That's the issue. I think that's what it is. I'm just going to get out there early for those of you who just like bag out of the thing and leave. At least you heard me. So tomorrow when there's some kind of planetary object in the air, you guys, Weber was right again. He's correct again. I almost wanted to go off on Monkey Man again. God, I hate that movie. Have I said that enough? (laughs) oh you are racist weber you're racist that's why you hated it oh my god those people broken-minded human beings literally weak-minded little bitches imax rules overall you guys see this article from thr it was really strong I, i i love reading these pieces that are really detailed about the importance of what theatrical after we just talked about the world ending tomorrow in a planet in the sky but hey that's what we do you know, I don't see Nerd Rock doing this shit. It's always woke this. Woke. I like actually Gary falls me. I can't I can't hammer the guy too bad. But it's it's really kind of like you kind of know, right? When's the last time he showed you a planet that I've shown you guys? A freaking rotating big giant ass equator on fire in the sky. No, he hasn't, because that's what we do. That's not what they do. Only we can do that weird shit. So here it is. IMAX CEO Rich Gelfond, they're telling the story about how he was talking to Cruz and to Nolan. Remember last summer, you had Oppenheimer and you had Mission Impossible 7, and 7 dropped first, and then Oppenheimer was the next weekend, and then Tom Cruise was like, we're going to lose our IMAX screens. We know how important that is, and they actually went with Oppenheimer. Remember that? And I didn't think it was the right call, and that's what the article kind of talks about. Nobody thought it was the right call, and then what happened? We saw what happened. Oppenheimer, one of the biggest IMAX hits ever. $188 million just behind. You look at it, two Avatar. Oh, my God, Avatar. Oh, oh, oh. I've never. I, I would rather take a bat to my head than have to watch another Avatar movie. God, those movies make you actively dumber when you watch them. Star Wars The Force Awakens and Endgame, Mission Impossible sputtered. Remember that? It came out and it didn't open. We did all those streams. Like, what's happening with this movie? Nobody really cares about Mission Impossible 7. And then, because we didn't know. We talked about the wave theory, right? We didn't know that it was getting, it was right in the path of Barbenheimer. And everybody's waiting for Barbenheimer. I've never seen anything like, remember that? Remember we went to the theaters that week? I went like every night to see what that was like. That was crazy. Remember how insane? Like you'd go to the movie theater and there was a line in Burbank of Barbie and Oppenheimer people. And I remember that weekend, every single showing was sold out. It was like the epicenter of the universe. AMC, Regal, wherever you you know. If you went, you, you saw this shit. And then Mission Impossible got wiped out, and it lost the IMAX screens. Oppenheimer had them. Barbie had Dolby and a few of the other PLFs. But IMAX is everything, and that's exactly what this article talks about, is that you have to have it. You look coming up here, Civil War this week. I'll see it tomorrow. The IMAX sneak previews. Go get a ticket now if you want. You can still watch the stream on your phone. Go ahead and hit the uh, AMC app. You have it. You have A-list. Boom. There, just get a seat. I'm going to give you a little tip about getting a ticket. If you if there's ever one of those sneak preview things and you don't have a ticket, I can say you go right now. Okay, let's let me just do it right now. So I'm gonna go to AMC Theaters and I'm gonna show you guys how to beat how to game the system. Okay, so let's go to get tickets. Give me a second, let me hit this. And we're gonna look for a ticket for Civil War tomorrow, which is an IMAX sneak. Okay, so let's go to tomorrow, Monday. 
Give me a second to load. Let's go down to, is it even on here? Let me just see all movies. Here it is. This is all movies. Okay, here we go. Let's go down. Let's find it. What the hell? This is not what I wanted. I just want to see everything that's at the movie. Okay, I don't even see it here. Where the hell is Civil War? Here it is. Boom. Sorry. There it is. This is what happens when you do it live. Okay, here's a 7 o'clock tomorrow. I'm seated. I'm seated. <laughs> look how packed that is. Guys, look. Is there a seat? No, there ain't shit. You want to sit in the front? That's a terrible seat. I'm sitting a few rows back. I like close, but I don't want the front row. Okay, right now, there's there's no good seats. Here's what's going to happen tomorrow. If you want to see Civil War tomorrow in IMAX, which, by the way, we're talking about IMAX and the importance of this, and look what's happening in 824. is like, we have an IMAX film. We got Civil War. I don't know if it is, really. If you look at this film, does it really look like an IMAX film? You know what I mean? I mean, but whatever. Of course, I'll see it. So, look, right now, sold out. Tomorrow. Now, tomorrow. Why tomorrow? You need to start looking tomorrow. It starts at 7. I would start looking at about 6. All of a sudden, you're going to see people drop because they go, I don't want to go. And they drop the ticket. Drop the ticket. So if you want to go see a movie and it's sold out, wait until about 20 minutes before it starts. They'll open up. One, two. If you're by yourself, you can always do that shit. That's why it's so. That's why, by the way, you know, that's why I like rolling by myself to the movies. I don't have to worry about two seats together. It's like, I'm just going to go see Femme. I'm going to go see Civil War tomorrow. It's so easy with the I. I'm telling you guys, the AMC app's the best thing ever. So back to the IMAX as we went a little bit off. Not really, because it was still tangential, right? It's IMAX Civil War. But you look here at the importance, and it's got a great quote here. If you look down to Todd Phillips, who is, of course, has this year Joker 2. And yes, that'll be an IMAX film. You look at, he knows, even, even directors that are making these smaller, intimate films, look at Challengers. That's going to be an IMAX film. They know that it's important, PTA, that th these movies, they want their films to be shown in IMAX. So they're using the technology, right, Phillips? Directors need to know that IMAX is one of the greatest partners you can have. If you show them a little love by embracing the format, they'll give it back to you 10 times. In other words, shoot some of the film in IMAX. Maybe not the entire film, but some of it. If you shoot the entire thing in IMAX, like Nolan in Oppenheimer, hello. But, you know, maybe for Phillips, listen, if I'm Warner Brothers and I am greenlighting Joker 2, which obviously we're doing, it's, duh, it's a billion-dollar-plus film. The first, you're going to say, yay, how much does it cost to shoot an IMAX? Let's go ahead and shoot an IMAX. Let's do it because that way we can really advertise this film is shot entirely in IMAX. And I think that is key to these films and driving people to those screens, those premium large format, PLF, right? But in this case, IMAX is, is the top dog. No question about it. Dune 2 is still making money. On IMAX, here it's at IMAX 70 millimeter over at Universal. Still huge crowds going to see that movie because they're like, listen, if I'm going to sit through three hours of a film and it's the only time I'm going to see it, or maybe I see it twice in theaters, I want to see one of them in the best possible format. And you saw that happening with Nolan and with Oppenheimer with the 70 millimeter IMAX that was only over at Universal. It was sold out for months. It was like a show in Vegas, right? You can't even get a ticket. And we talked about Universal IMAX. If you're up in the front at Universal IMAX, you can't see shit. It's like right up. You're like, what the? There's a nostril. It looks like Monkey Man in a normal screening. <laughs> Sick burn, baby. Because all Deb Patel could do is jam that camera up as tight as possible because he knew his film looked like shit. Monkey Man isn't even a good film. These people saying it's a great film, you all suck. Seriously, you're terrible at this. You're not, just leave. Get out of the space and make room for somebody else who doesn't have, you know, has the balls to come out and say Monkey Man sucks. And then not be afraid and not run from it. Oh, he's hating on the trans community because it's got a, tr shut the hell, just shut up. The movie's not good. I don't care what the representation is. The movie's not good. I'm not playing these games anymore with this shit. And I want the funny thing is, there's so many other people could do exactly what I'm doing. They just don't have the fucking balls to do it. They don't, man. You you gotta just not care what other people think. You think I give a shit about what strange dork ass Harbors has to say? I didn't think that Jeff Zhang's a real person. He's an AI fucker. That guy's not even real. Do I give a shit about that guy? 
That guy's such a dweeb. Why would I even give him a second of my space in my mind? Any of these people, the majority of them are wannabes. They have no cojones and they have no ability to stand in their truth and not worry about what anyone else has to say. I don't need their approval. Certainly not strange loser ass harbors. I mean, look at that. Using his same stock photo. That's like a stock photo of a guy. The guy's such a dork. Will you guys please do me a favor? If you don't leave me a thing, hammer that guy 24-7. Literally go on Twitter and destroy it. Just tell him he's a dweeb. And I said so over and over. I hope to one day meet him. I don't even think it's a real person. I think it's an AI. It's someone hiding. in Because it's like, you know how when so, no one posts a picture? It's like catfished. I mean, you guys know I'm real. I'm here. Every time I change my avatar on Twitter, like all the time, it's like a new picture. I'm not somebody running a picture from 20 years ago. I told you about that critic I ran into at one of the screenings last summer. And, and the person walked in and I go, who the, I didn't even know who it was. And then someone goes, said the name, Hey, blah, blah. I'm not going to say who it was. And I went, what? I went, well, this is false representation. Your picture on your Twitter. What? That's not even the same person. Did you run that shit through Photoshop? Did you squeeze like 50 pounds off your body? How, like, you, you guys know, I've never, that's why I love posting those shirtless pictures. They're always, <laughs> why wouldn't I? They're never touched up. I, the only thing I do is go into Twitter. It's got those like six filters. I've never gone in and like, let's get rid of this. They're, look at the pictures. It's like a stray hair. Or like here or there. It's like, I don't go in there and change shit. I'm not one of the Kardashians. But everyone else is like, here's a picture of me from 20 years ago. And you see him in person. Like, Holy shit. That's that's that person? Why, why? But you know why they're not using a picture? Because they don't look like that. It's false. They're catfishing you, these people. I don't catfish you. And I never will catfish you. <laughs> this show is so weird. I don't even care. All right, what do you want to talk about next? Yeah, Daria was amazing. I don't know. She might be an alien. She definitely looks like one. Her Again, her eyes could not be further apart. That's She's still objectively pretty, right? God, oh, no, we're going to get into this whole thing. It's like, oh, we've been told what's attractive. No, we haven't. We are all attracted to what you're attracted to. I think that's one of the things about femme, a movie we'll talk about here momentarily. It really deals... I think, well, very, very strongly with the concept of you're attracted to what you're attracted to, even if you know that it's not the right thing, you're still, you get, you fall into a trance. And I think, you know, that's just the reality of it, right? We all have our type. I don't, whatever, I don't care if you're gay, if you're straight, if you're whatever you are, if you have a type, you have a type. There's no way to change that. It's just like what it is, you know? Almost said, oh my god, I almost said something that might have actually got me canceled. <laughs> John, <laughs> it's just listen, I it's it's getting a little gray, so I added just a little bit of shading. Just a, it's not like I went in and put like a freaking shoe polish on my face. Good God. See, this is the thing. At least you know when I come on here. Then I'm telling you truths. I don't deal in bullshit. I'm not strange, fake motherfucker harbors. I'm a real person. I, I, I love, I'm just going to literally every single stream just destroy that loser. Every single stream. Because these people, they're so unremarkable. That guy, go read his blog. I, I bring it back to this. I said it before. That dude recommended Ferrari. <laughs> Have you guys seen Ferrari? It's not a good movie. Certainly not a well-directed movie. And I think what drives me crazy, and go back to Monkey Man, and you look at a Ferrari. Two films that have really just got me fucking riled up. You watch them and you go, this is not good direction on either front, either Ferrari or Monkey Man. It's competent, but it's not anything that we're going to hold up as some kind of new paradigm. This is how, first of all, Rose Glass destroys Deb Patel. Like, if you were to say, like, first film, Charlotte Wells, destroy. Oh, I'm using female directors. He always oh, being smart about this. Hmm, I thought he was going to say a white guy. What about John Patton Ford? That's a white guy. Oh, my God. Now we can attack. That's how people think now, right? That's how they do. You can't attack Charlotte Wells, but we can't attack when you say John Patton Ford. 
these are all, all three of those films, right? You look at an After Sun, a Saint Maud, and an Emily the Criminal. All three of those films bury each one individually. All three detonate Monkey Man. Monkey Man's like in tatters. It's like literally Monkey Man is has an arm over there. There's an eyeball here. It's, it's bad. It's not a great film. It's, it's, God, that was, I'm telling you guys, I can't decide what was worse, that or poor things. I hate that film. Have I said that enough tonight? <laughs> oh my God. Michael Mann is done. He's done, man. He's, he really is. Michael Mann is 80 something years old. When I'm 80, which is soon, I will not be as, I, I don't want to use the word good, as quick. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it somewhere in the middle as quick as I would when, I, when I'm 80. I'm not, there's no way compared to tonight. If I'm still doing the stream, I'm sure I'll be ranting and raving, but I won't be assuming the world doesn't end tomorrow, but I'm not going to be as quick. Right. And I think that's what's happened here. Michael Mann lost his fastball. Ferrari's not a good film and I would never let him direct heat too. There's no chance. If I don't know who, who's running that film back. Is it, is it Warner's? I'm saying no, I I'm literally, this is how serious I am about heat Two and Michael Mann not directing it. If he insisted on directing it, I would actually say, go to another studio. That's how dead set I am on not letting him touch heat Two because Ferrari is such an, underwhelming directorial effort and he's 80 something he's lost it let's not pretend cut, let's stop pretending that people don't lose abilities as they get older and you're not talking to a 28 year old kid here as you get older i was reminded of that today playing volleyball i only have so many games in me before i break down and my back feels like i'm 100 now, I go to the gym and try to stay in shape to be able to do these things, but ultimately, I cannot contend with a 27-year-old kid who's in his athletic prime, but I can do my best to at least be competitive. Michael, I'm not 80, though. Michael Mann's oh, Sorry, guys. I'm ageist. Not 27. I'm allowed to say these things. I'm allowed to say whatever I want. You can't stop me. You're not. No. He's 80. Michael, you can maybe write it and then we'll look at it and then you're not going to direct it. It's that simple. We don't have anybody who has the balls to do that. There's no studio head that would say that to Michael Mann. I'd be like, Michael, listen, I'm going to be frank with you. And that's what I do. Um, I saw Ferrari. It's not great. And I think that, you know, maybe at this point in your career, it's best that we hand this off to a John Patton Ford and let him handle it. I mean, have you seen Emily the Criminal? Let me show you the film. Let's sit down in the screening room here. Let's watch Emily the Criminal, and you're going to see a real talent. Here we go. Boom. And then afterwards, you know, he might go, well, whatever. And I'd be like, well, I, this is, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to give this film to John Patton Ford. And we're going to let him run with this and I'll let you write it and you'll have a lot of say. We'll let you kind of be on set for sure. You I mean, you're going to have a lot of discussion about the editorial content here. But as far as the style of the film, this is all John Patton Ford. And I want you to understand that as we go forward, when we make this film, that there's not some kind of you know misunderstanding here. That, why, why am I the only guy who can have this conversation? And I would have it. And I would still tell him I love Heat, I love Collateral. I think he is really, truly, at his prime, a great director, but not now. And and unfortunately, we just don't live in that world. We have a world where it's just, you can't say these things. It's mean. Just like I, I can't say Monkey Man's bad because that makes you racist. And obviously, it has trans involved, so it makes you anti-trans. So, which is, guys, you guys, come on. It's so stupid. Uh, but, yeah, that's the world. But here's the thing. is, If you don't let those people come in, into your space, which they can try, but ultimately I'll flatten them. I will flatten them. So they know that. And when you when you put that out there, they go, oh, I'm not going to mess with Weber. Because they don't, because the thing is, is I'm going to go ahead and flip the script on them and then recommend Femme in about five minutes here, which is totally representational film, but that's not why I'm recommending it. You see, that's why I win because I win every time because I don't have a dog in the fight. I have an objective mindset on these things. And that's why it's important. I was watching the Ebert documentary, which by the way, I've seen multiple times. It's on YouTube right now on the free movies. It's called Life Itself. If you have not watched that, it's a little tough to watch because Ebert at the end of his life, when he had cancer and his jaw was off, and it was it's really hard. He's he's it's not an easy watch at first, you know, just to see him in that state. Because I think you think about how 
we go and we meet people in our lives and maybe we lose touch of them and then we see them again. It's always a wild thing if you haven't seen someone in a while and they've changed. Like, let's imagine I don't do the show for like a year and I come back on and we're doing MMT in 2025, assuming the world doesn't end tomorrow. And all of a sudden, uh, I have a shaved head and I put on 30 pounds. You guys be like, whoa. You, at first, you just be like, okay, yeah, it's Weber, but it's you're used to a certain thing. And I think that's what one of the, it's just, it's just natural. It's your reaction. It's a natural reaction. There's nothing wrong with you having that reaction to seeing Ebert in this film. But the ideas of the film is that's what I right, gravitate to. And when you watch that film, especially Siskel, you guys, I've told you so many times, who is my spirit animal as a film critic? Who's the reason I'm here tonight talking to you guys on a Sunday live from the City of Angels about movies and the world ending tomorrow? It's Siskel. And because I just love how that man thought. I like how he presented himself. Granted, I am much more aggressive than that man, but I feel like we have similar ideas. And, I, you know, sometimes you just you see someone and you go, I admire what they do and I'm going to take a piece of that. And I think that's what it was with me watching Cisco and Eber way back when I was just a little kid watching on PBS later syndication and then on and on, even with AO Scott taking over and Phillips from the other Chicago, Chicago Tribune. Right. I like Michael Phillips. I wish he actually was still doing some stuff on television. I'd love to do a show with Michael Phillips. That would, I mean, listen, I, I, that would be wild to do something with, a, a film critic that you loved, like Gene Siskel, if we could do that, if I could ever, if I had a wish, what would you wish to have? I would love to do an At The Movies one episode with Gene Siskel and we get after it about Monkey Man. But I have a feeling he'd say Monkey Man's not a great film. So I think that's a good thing. That's a good thing. When the world ends tomorrow, what's the first thing you're going to do in heaven? Um, I don't, yeah, that's a, <laughs> wow, okay. Uh, go to the gym. <laughs> oh my god no i'm gonna go look for gene siskel that's perfect i really would i would love to go up and just tell him how much he meant to me um it's where you know you get a chance to meet people that you really admire i remember this story i think i maybe have told this i'll tell it again quickly i was in the atlanta airport back when i was a tv news guy i was a tv sports guy i know wild right my life's like insane i should write a script about just how insane my life and what i've done it's like this this isn't real this dude's life is weird yeah it is but so what the message is listen i can tell you right now the message is this in life you go do it you just say yes you go do and you explore and you go 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 you don't stay back you ho you don't hold back you don't worry about what other people think of you all that stuff we've talked about that only about what a billion times on the stream you have to just push and be fearless and not worry about fitting in because that's one of the biggest problems people have in this world is they worry about what are other people thinking about me? I don't care. And then when you don't care about that, then actually it makes you, gives you more power and allure because people are like, wow, I, I admire that because we don't have many people like that. It just doesn't happen. But I think you go, well, I was in the Atlanta airport and I was running between flights where you're like, going to a Jacksonville Jaguars game versus the Packers. And I was down there in Jacksonville and we were in Atlanta on the way through a connector. And I, I, I saw Bruce Hornsby and I go, oh my God, Bruce, do you guys don't understand? Bruce Hornsby is one of my favorite musical artists, maybe ever. I mean, you go back and you look at the way it is, that whole album, which I believe was the, God, what else is on it? Mandolin Rain. Um, that whole, that was one of the first CDs I ever had when CDs were new. I forget the name of that album. It's so great. And then after that, the one after he had that stretch from like 86, 87 to 90. And you go back and you listen to that man. When he plays the piano, Bruce Hornsby, there's no one more talented than him. I went up on Bruce Hornsby and he was like super tall and super like running off to catch a flight. But I had to, I had to say for a moment, you fucking rock Bruce Hornsby. I listen to your music. I love you. And it's all that. And it's, it's really cool living out here. You get a chance to do that too. I told you about running to Jason Siegel in Old Town to Pasadena and telling him how much I loved End of the Tour. Oh my God. End of the Tour. Mm, what a film. And I, I told him he should have been up for an Oscar for that film. And he's, he was really nice, really low, kind of low key. So I think he lives in the Pasadena area. But it's really fun to run into people that are heroes such as, you know, Elizabeth Olsen. <laughs> God, she's hot. She's so hot. Okay, let's do... Oh, who cares? Let's do the Sydney Sweeney, and then we'll talk about film. Because I know that's a smaller movie, but I'm just going to prove I am not 
against representation. I'm against representation celebration for the fact of celebration of representation. I want to celebrate representation if the film is good, not just because it's in the movie. What are we doing? Stop doing that shit. It's like that Dylan Mulvaney. Okay, let me just tell you something about Dylan Mulvaney. And this isn't anti-trans. Dylan Mulvaney is boring. There's nothing that she brings to the table. You know, listen, I am. it doesn't matter. I don't even care what your sex is. If you're cool and you bring a talent to the table, then I'm going to be like, hell yeah. You watch Dylan Mulvaney, is that her name? And I go, what the? There's nothing there. Not even cute. Not nothing. There's nothing interesting about that person. And that's the thing is, why are we celebrating this person? They're not funny. They're not interesting. They're nothing. Because they're trans? That's not enough, man. We're not going to do that. Imagine if we saw, hey, Weber, we're going to celebrate you because you're a white guy. What? No, you're not going to do that. That's fucking weird. Don't do that shit. People, here's what I, here's what my active guess on what this whole thing is is that there are a lot of people in this world, and I think you guys know this, what I'm going to say is you guys are like, no shit. There's a lot of people in this world who can't find their measure of attention through any other way than to come up with something that will no doubt get them some attention. People accuse me of that. They go, oh, you hate monkey man. You hated poor things. You hated Bo is afraid because you wanted clicks and you wanted your name out there. No, and everyone knows this. That's not the reason because the movies suck. And the reason I hated them is because they're bad. The problem is we have too many people out there who are trying to do this thing, create some kind of persona, and they're not even a real person. And you're like, why am I supposed to be interested in you? There's got to be a reason, right? It's not just because someone tells you. It's because the person has value or talent that you're interested in. Otherwise, I'm not just going to celebrate Dylan Mulvaney because they're trans. That's not enough. It's not enough, man. Not enough. You got to do more, and that person doesn't have any more. So that, you know, and that's not anti trans. That's 100% true, and you guys know it. Tell me what, not funny, not cute. Seriously, objectively, not cute. So what are we talking about? You know, why, are we, why are we doing this? It doesn't make sense. Conversely, if you were to tell me, why are we celebrating Ryan Gosling? Why are we celebrating anybody? And of course, I, have to, I just told you I have a man crush on Ryan Gosling. Why are we celebrating what it, you're going to say, okay, I see why, because boom, 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 right? You see the reasons. But, you're, but when someone's saying, like, this is great, and you, like, let's say a music group, and you listen to it, and you're like, this isn't good. Oh, and like Monkey Man, right? Go back to Monkey Man. Why do you think Monkey Man's being celebrated? For two reasons, right? Big reasons. One, representation, and also there's the trans angle in there, which is not a reason to recommend. But we live in a society now that if it has that, we're going to push it up. No, we're not. That's never going to be good. And these people are the ones that are ruining the world because that's not why we ever elevate something. We elevate something because they bring value to the they, – they're good. It's good. And Monkey Man's not good. It's, it's, it, I mean, I'm not going to talk about that movie ever again. It's done. It's terrible. It's a it's a bad film. It really is. The rush to create content for the sake of content has made our world such much worse. And let's also talk about this, Johnny. This is going to be brutal. I'm going to do it. I do it all the time, and it is what it is. I don't know what to tell you guys. Not everybody is good at podcasting or live streaming or any of this. I think we live in a world, unfortunately, where everyone's been told they're good at everything. That's not true. It's 100% false. Everybody has individual talents. There are a reason. There's a reason why professional athletes are where they are. It's because they are the most talented at their sport in the world. There's a reason why Messi is the best soccer player on the planet. Because he is. He's talented. I couldn't be the best soccer player in the world. I didn't even play soccer growing up. It wasn't even big. Well, I was a kid, which is hilarious because now I have every football kit from every team around the world. As you see tonight, I wore the Eclipse kit the Columbus crew, which is black with a sun. You guys see it? There's the sun. There's the, it's blackout. See, these things are thought out. This isn't just hodgepodge shit. This stuff is structured like five seconds before I come on the air, but either way, it's still a structure, but we have a situation in the world where we think that anybody can do this. And I'm not, listen, as I say that I'm not even telling you that I'm good at what I do. 
That's not that's not what we're doing here. I'm telling you that there are people out there who've been told they're good at something and they're really not. And I think that's an issue too because then we're putting up a false reality and I think we have to be careful because you know the kids these days all told they're great. You're great. You have a participation trophy. You're an amazing person. And it's like, well, yeah, I mean, listen. But still, I that's why I don't ever have I ever never come on here and said, this is a great movie and not believed it hundred percent in my bones because I don't believe in telling people bullshit, especially in this town to get ahead. That's what this town does. I remember going to see poor things. I was sitting there and there's three, I told you guys the story a hundred times. Here it is again. The three girls behind me, they were clearly like assistants to agents, you know, worked at one of the CAA or William Morris or Ger- Gersh, whatever the other ones are. Uh, I see him. And they're all here and and they're watching the movie and you could just hear them going laughing at everything, thinking everything was great. And because that's what you have to do. If you're in Hollywood, you have to do that. You can't be like me who I'd be an agent and they'd have some, someone come that movie wasn't good. Like, like remember that movie we talked about Knox goes away, which was Michael Keaton's director his second film. He directed not a good film. And if I had, he showed me like, here, Michael Keaton, I'm his agent. And he's like, here's my new film. Knox goes away. Most agents would be like, this is great. This is really strong. I love it. It's got a noir touch to it. It's really smart. I'd be like, yeah, man, Michael, uh, hmm. this is not very good. (laughs) This is why I would, they wouldn't last long because I can't do it. I'm liar, liar. It's Jim Carrey in that movie. I can't do it. I'd be like, this movie, it's terrible. My, what were you thinking? And that guy, what's his name with the blue eyes? The guy from Sonic. He's bad. He's like acting his ass off. He's crying in every scene and Knox goes away. (laughs) That movie's terrible. All right, let's talk about Sydney Sweeney. Oh, my God. Knox gets wet. <laughs> That's what I called it that night, didn't I? It's just, it's such a ridiculous... That film's bad. You, I think it's available on your streaming services now. Go watch Knox Goes Away. You guys are like, this is shit. You'll see a bad film. It's it, it's it, Just wait. Just watch it. I love you guys to watch a bad film, and then you know it. You'll be like, this is terrible. Uh, okay, here we go. Sydney Sweeney's father saw her naked in a graphic sex scene on HBO's provocative television series Euphoria. He walked out of the room. They're setting the thing. She's only 26, and five years later, he's the proud father of one of Hollywood's hottest rising stars in a recent hit in rom-com, Anyone But You, Spider-Man spinoff. First of all, I wouldn't even mention Madam Web. What? And starring this month as a pregnant nun in the horror movie Immaculate. So, <laughs> can I say, we're going to talk about why Sydney Sweeney and her double D breasts are being hailed as proof that woke culture is dead. But I want to say that there's many times when I read things on Daily Mail, which I love. Daily Mail is amazing. Is that it's terribly written. <laughs> but, but I love the concept. Right, We're all about concepts here on MMT. The concept of Sydney Sweeney and her double D breasts hailed as proof that woke culture is dead. That's an article. That's what I want to read. I don't want to read Scientific Weekly. I want to read about Sydney Sweeney and her double D harbingers, harbingers of the death of woke. Are they? <laughs> what? I mean, listen, those are nice. I, like, come on. Let's not, let's not be stupid about this. Those are really nice. And uh, come on, guys, is there even a man, a straight man out there who wouldn't at least look twice at Sydney Sweeney as she was like walking? Her- of course you would, which makes us sexist bastards. Who cares? We're attracted to what we're attracted to. And there's a reason why people are attracted to Sydney Sweeney. She's that cute, petite blonde we've talked about with the Marilyn Monroe going back way back. Heather Locklear and Farrah Fawcett, and Pam Anderson. And who else am I missing? Obviously, Marilyn Monroe, like we said. But, you know, that's what she is. She's not that interesting as an actress, but it doesn't matter. She's cute. Okay. According to National Post comment writer Amy Hamm. Uh Uh-oh, it's a female writer. Watch out. 
We spent years being chastised for desiring or admiring beauty because beauty is rare and exclusionary. And to exclude is to hate. Oh, I like this Amy Ham. She's very, this is really good. Or so we've been scolded to accept by today's diversity, equity, and inclusion fanatics. We aren't supposed to admire Sweeney's beauty, but we've done it anyways. The times are changing. And that's what I'm talking about. This whole stream has been about this. Thank you, Amy Ham. We've been scolded. We can't say that a movie's bad if it has diversity. You can't say that, Weber. Monkey Man's a great film because it features a trans angle and it's directed by an Indian man. No, that's not why. We will never do that, ever, for the remainder of time. And we never have said that a movie's great because it's directed by a woman or anybody. It's great. So now what they're saying is, is like, it's okay to look at Sidney Sweeney and say it's cool. I mean, look at Sidney Sweeney on the bed there in Euphoria. I'm allowed to do this, right? It would. Be, can I ask you guys a question? Be real with me, because I like being. I, I like. I like just being real. Um, just be fair. If I were like a 300 pound bald fat ass. Could I get away with saying what I'm saying about Sydney Sweeney and Euphoria on the bed? Just honestly tell me right now. Just tell me right now. Could I get away with it? Could I get away with what? I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think I could because that's it's weird, but that's the thing. That's why I think the other reason why people get fucking furious with me because they go, he's allowed to do stuff that maybe some other people can't because there's a world in which, and, I, and I'm not, listen, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that, well, I don't know how to say this. I'm just going to say it like this. There's a world where decent looking ladies check me out, okay? So when you have that kind of thing, and this is not ego, I'm just telling you, it's just what it is. It allows you to do stuff like this because for other people, like, oh, that's creepy. And they still might, but they, they, they still go, well, yeah, it is creepy, but I just, oh, I can't fucking do it. God, Weber, oh, this guy's driving me crazy, man. Oh, yeah, like exactly that. Harry Knowles, you know, or like Frosty. He's just because you know why I can tell you why. Here's why. Because you look at a Frosty. He's not a cool guy. And I'm not saying I am, but at least I try to make myself somewhat cool. I go to the gym. I've got my cool soccer kits, football jerseys, whatever you want to call them. I've got my thing. I play beach volleyball with my boys. I do my, th I'm not like the normal guy. So like a Frosty's like this little short dude, bald. You couldn't imagine him. Sydney Sweeney wouldn't even look at him. Sydney Sweeney might take a glance out of the corner of her eye at me. <laughs> I'm just saying that's, that's why I get away with some of this, but it's true. We're allowed to do that. If Sydney Sweeney was in poor things, I still would hate it. Now. Okay. Is that fair? But but I do I do love the fact that we are now allowed to do this. And let me tell you something. We don't need permission. I don't need permission. I hope the film Twitter dweebs come after me. I laugh at them. I will continue to dominate and destroy them 24-7. It doesn't, it's easy for me. It's not even effort. E unless the world ends and then we're fucked. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna do fam and then we're gonna do MMT gets freaky. Because we're almost up on an hour, and I got to talk about the eclipse tomorrow because I think the world's going to end. There's a part of me that thinks something really weird's going to happen, like really, really fucking weird. But I'm going to talk about Femme because I promised it. By the way, can I just, I'm going to call somebody out right now. Let me just go to Twitter because that's what I like to do. This is this is what I'm talking about. People are weird. Have you guys noticed, like, sometimes, like, people are weird and they're, like, looking for you to fuck up. Me especially, for whatever reason, people come after me and they go, well, uh, I, 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 they wait, they wait for me. Like I, I say things, they go, wait, they, but here's the thing. You're never going to stop me. So they don't, so, but here, look, okay, let me find it. So last night I saw femme, which is a movie that most people, you know, a lot of like a lot of these woke guys, anti woke guys, they would never watch femme. Okay. I'm gonna show you the trailer in a minute, but okay, here it is. Here it is. This guy, Prairie oysters. Check this tweet out. Okay. You guys ready? Check this out. So I saw femme. And, and this guy says 12 hours later and still no reaction to this one, i.e., are you afraid to say something bad about a film that has a drag queen and has a gay subculture, you know, grinder kind of thing going on? No, Prairie Oysters, because I'm a fucking badass. 
I said, I'm going to wait for the stream. I don't owe you shit on Twitter. And by the way, if I thought it was bad, I would hammer it. So don't think you're coming after me, Prairie Oysters, with your bullshit. Like, is he afraid to say something bad about a movie with a drag queen? No, I'm not, and I would. And if you don't know me by now, bitch, you need to get to know me. That's not how I roll. I roll where I don't give a shit, Prairie Oysters. Don't come into my world trying to go, and no reaction? What's going on? Are you afraid of saying something? Are you afraid? Prairie Oysters continue being unremarkable. That's what I can tell you. If that's what this was designed to say, I don't know if it was, but just remember that. You continue to be unremarkable in your life. I'll continue to kick ass because I'm fearless and you're not. Here we go. Femme, official trailer. I'm going to watch a minute. The problem is, as soon as I show too much of this, I got hit with the copyright bullshit for Asphalt City. All I'm trying to do is make you guys watch these cool films like Asphalt City, or in this case, Femme. I'm going to give you a second of this film. We're going to talk about Femme, a film that nobody else would talk about, because normally it's like, oh, whatever, you can't say anything about that movie. It's He's not going to talk about Femme. Oh, really? I am talking about Femme. Here we go. Here's the trailer. Oh, let's go, babe. Oh, God. <laughs> you know, his daddy wanted him to be a surgeon. Drag me. Be your daddy likes me just the big bang. <laughs> I'm going to pause because I'm going to get hit with the copyright. If I pause, I think I can get away with it. So real quick, let's set this. So we have a drag queen in London, the gay scene there, the nightclub scene, and wait till you see who pops up in this movie. Who's, I mean, let me tell you, this performance is by far the best of the year that I've seen. This kid's good. But who you're going to see in a minute is my performance of the year of 2024 so far. You see, this is, first of all, what are you seeing about this? It's pumping. It's got the club shit going on. It's grounded. It's slick direction. I love this kind of shit. Look, it's our boy from 1917. Checking me out earlier. We don't know each other. So he plays... He plays a, a guy who's kind of like a, I don't say neo-Nazi, but he was in prison. And it turns out he's closeted gay. And the drag queen gets beaten up by him. And then the relationship continues, though, because she figures out, he figures out that the other guy's gay. So they end up hooking up. And oh, then it man. turns into this like fatal attraction. If you don't know where it's going, I'm telling you guys, this you film's really it. strong, and it's about the performances. It's about the direction. It's called Femme. It's a tight 90-ish minute film, and I think it's actually on Netflix in the UK. It's getting the theatrical lease here. Very small. Utopia is a tiny brand here in the state. I really like this film. It's very much like an Asphalt City for me, and these are the films I want to watch. I want to watch real characters exist in the real world, and I want the direction to be cinema verite. I want it to be documentary and feel, and this film's very good. I am going to tell you this. If you're not comfortable with gay sex, there's a lot in this film. There's a lot. I'm not going to lie to you. So you have to know that going in. But that said, Femme is an 88% for me. Same score as Asphalt City. These films are not necessarily great, great films, but they're very strong films, and they're two of my favorite films I've seen this year because these are the films I want to watch. I want to watch this kind of film, right? And I know, oh, Weber! Weber just liked a movie about a drag queen with the gay subculture. Yes, I did! It's really badass. And that, what's his name? Help me out, the kid's name. I don't have it in front of me. He's good. He's really cool. No, I understand. Listen, Byron, I get it. For It's not for everybody, but I'm just telling you, here's the thing. Here's the reality is that I'm not, I'm never judging my reaction to a movie based on the content. I love, I mean, obviously, yes, but I love a film that is always, say it along with me, guys, grounded, gritty, real characters, and doesn't do anything in the film that feels like why right they make these decisions sometimes in these films that turn like some character does something stupid and you're like why is this in the movie you know you we've all seen those films where all of a sudden something happens you take you totally out of the film there's nothing i totally agree with this brits do have sham do have solid content there's something about that direction that raw just grounded stuff that they do uh you know bfi 
I think the BBC is on this one, but it's really good. It's very well made, and it's a very small indie, Lizzie. It's tiny. Go check it out. It's again, it's on Netflix if you want to see it. All right, guys, uh, for in the UK, if you want to see it here in the states, good luck. But again, remember, it, it's gonna it's for some. It's not for everybody. I'm not gonna lie to you. Here we go, guys. Get ready. It's time for MMT gets freaky. Why? Because whoom, we are on the eve of the eclipse. Now, I know we have eclipses like every, like we just had a somewhat of an eclipse just a few months ago. I remember going out here and watching it in the street. This is the full-on solar eclipse, right, where everything lines up. Here's what I, here's why this thing's crazy, and here's why I'm telling you I think we're going to see something that is weird. You guys ready? For those of you who didn't join us last week, I'm going to show you something that will change your life right now. Please pay attention to the screen as we get ready to... it. That be in view tomorrow. Now you're asking me why? Because when you get the blackage of the sun, the sky is going to be lit differently. So there's some. Here's what I'm telling you. I don't know what the technology is. I have no idea what the technology is that they have to be able to obscure things that are out there that we can't see. I can't answer that. Don't ask me to answer that. But I am going to show you something. Give me a second. Okay. Remember what I told you guys? This is the FAA weather cams. Here we go. This is the FF, FFA, FAA weather cams. In fact, I'll just go to a random right now. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So you can see this is a live thing. It's not, you know, okay, so here we go. Let me hit this one, and I'm going to go back and show you what I'm going to show you. So here's, look, these are all weather cams. This is weathercams.faa.gov. You go to a certain weather cam. There's a ton in Colorado. One of my favorite is Bald Mountain and Wolf Creek Pass. Let's click on Bald Mountain. Okay, so right now, look, you can see it's dark, right? Can you guys see that? It's dark at Bald Mountain right now. But if I go back and I hit the camera loop, where's the camera loop? Show camera loop. Watch. We're going to watch the sun go down. You guys ready? Here we go. So I hit the button. It's going to take a picture every 10 10 minutes or so. You can look at the sky, okay? So look, we, what you're basically doing is you're going to scan the sky for what I'm talking about. And what I'm going to show you, these things are there almost every day. It's there. Why can I see it in Colorado on the FAA weather cam and you can't see it? I can't answer that. Maybe that changes tomorrow, but here's what I'm going to show you. So that's Bald Mountain. So then I could go, let's just do one more. If I want to go and I'm going to say, let's go to Walden, Jackson County. You hit this, okay? Then I'm going to hit, watch, you have to hit show camera loop. And then you go back to the beginning and hit the loop and you're going to look at the sky. What you're looking for is these these things are rolling through the through the atmosphere. They're rolling across the screen, not all the time, it depends on what direction you are and what it is. But here's what I'm going to show you. So this is, that's live. Here's the one I'm going to tell you. This is from Alaska. This is from Larson Bay. And watch this thing, guys. Please, if you haven't seen this yet, get ready to scream. And if you scream, please do so. Make sure your neighbors are not asleep when I show you this. Because you're going to go, oh my God! Okay, pay attention to the left-hand portion of your scream. You can see as the mountain kind of slopes down, right? Let me make sure it's going right. Down, right? You're going to look right in that corner to the left side, right at that mountain. Ready? Watch. Don't leave. Stay and watch because you're going to see it. Watch it come into view. Wait for it. Okay, do you see it? There's a little bit of a hint of something right there. I don't know if I can zoom in. Let me see. No, I can't. Okay, so watch. Watch the space. Again, left side right above the ridge line. Here it comes. There's one. There's two. Boom. Look at that. Do you Do you or do you not see that? Okay, we showed it to you last week. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> I detest my neighbors, so let's get it on. Listen, uh, listen, good, Johnny, go for it. Do you guys see it? Watch. I'm gonna, now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit the button, okay? I'm going to hit the button, and it's going to rotate. Watch. So, there, watch. First of all, do you guys see that? There's craters. There's a giant ass crater on the top of that. Do you guys see it? Yes or no? And there's a line going across the middle. Give me a second. I'm going to hit it again. It's going to rotate. Remember, it's not, if it were like some kind of like thing that flashed in, it'd be like one frame, one frame. And it wouldn't move. This thing is fucking turning, man. Watch. Okay. Did you see that? 10 minutes later, the timestamp is, I believe, uh, roughly 10 minutes, nine to 10 minutes. It rotates. Now you can see it. Okay. Now you fully see what I'm talking about. Correct. Now watch. Let's see if we can get it. Let's see if we can get it to go again. Okay. Here it goes. Boom. Now you really see everything there. You see the giant crater on the top. You see a line across the middle. If you were to zoom in on this, the line looks like it goes across and then turns into like a fork. Okay. I mean, 
no, but wait, but wait, it's not. So again, this came straight off of a weather can that you can, anyone can do this. Watch, here you go. Boom, rotate. And here's the key. As it rotates, every time it frames forward, no, it's definitely not a water drop, but get out of here, bud. Is every time it rotates, the crater or the line goes right where you expect it to, right? So it's it's rotate like you know if I took my hand and then went like this, it would go exactly how you wanted to. It wouldn't go like this and then this and then this and then this, right? It would just one, two, three. That's what's happening. Watch. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit it and then we're gonna listen. Watch it in full mode motion. Okay, there it goes. Now you can really see that line across the middle. You can see all kinds of craters. Now, right now, here comes the sun. The sun is going to come up behind it, and then you're going to lose it. Ready? Here comes the sun. We talked about them having some kind of cloaking. I don't know what the cloaking is. Watch. There it goes. Do you see? But it's still there. Do you see the, the faint? Okay, there's a faint circle there. This is very important. This is important. Do you see that almost looks like the Death Star right now, right? There's like the, there's almost like a blue circle. Tell me if you see that right now, because I need to explain this to you. Do you see the blue circle in the middle of that thing? Okay. That is in weather cams everywhere, every day. What you're looking at, that thing is in the sky everywhere in the east every single day. This is now, right now we are looking, I believe it's east if I look here. Let's see, where is he looking? Let me see. He's got this. It's south. So this is this is later in the day. East early, south later. It goes from so east to south. Okay. Watch. Do you see it still? It's it's really hard to make out at this point, but it's there. Do you see the circle? You see the circle? That circle is like either a giant crater or it's like an ice, something of ice. It's got a reflection to it. So whatever's in the middle of that thing is like a gigantic, like frozen lake. I know this is crazy, man. I don't know what to tell you guys. Wait, let's rotate it one more. Here we go. Okay, now it's now you start to lose it, but you still see the edges of it, right? Okay. And then you're gonna then then you you can still see the edges. He's pointing that out. And then the sun's gonna come out, and then it's gonna completely disappear. Barely, you can sort of see the line. Stop right there. You can sort of see the line. Let me go back one tiny bit. If you look closely, you can see the line almost the equator cutting across and then it's still turning it's still turning and then the sun's going to totally goodbye right there almost it's still there it's still there you can still see it there's still a circle it's faint that is what it looks like do you see that i'm just here to tell you that's real whatever that is is there i mean it's i, I i'm not even if i if you gave me a million dollars and said if is what you're looking at real Here's the problem, and this is why I think tomorrow could be big, and I'm not saying it will be. I hope it's not, for God's sake. If this, can I just add, now that you're watching the show and you're kind of with me on this shit, what if you had never entertained the idea that this thing's out there and you'd never seen it, and then all of a sudden you looked up and you saw this? What if tomorrow you see a gigantic something in the sky? What are you going to do? If you're with me, you watch my show, you'll be like, yeah, that's Weber. He's right. <laughs> if you're not you're gonna go oh my god and everyone's gonna freak out and i think that's i'm not saying this is what's gonna happen tomorrow but here's the deal whatever they're using to cover this shit up is starting to fade and i think the more and more that becomes visible the more trouble it's gonna be obviously this stream isn't good this is more people there's lots of people doing these streams by the way i'm not the only person um yeah no no listen it's not just about colorado jeff it's about this thing's not just in colorado the thing is is it's visible this object is no joke it is visible from virtually every east facing faa weather cam every day if you go and look up in the corner in the morning i might even tweet one out tomorrow for those of you who doubt me you're gonna see what i just showed you especially that that circle there is a gigantic almost death star circle on this thing that is in the middle and it looks like it's ice because it's almost reflecting so it's either glass which is weird i don't know what to tell you what that is i don't know what any of this is or it's ice because you get a reflection you get it, you're getting light kicked off it <laughs> i mean it should be, but, but listen, I'm not even, here's the reality. I'm not even the guy who wants, I don't want to believe these things because I like my life how it is. It's cool. I don't like them fucking with us and telling us we have to do X, Y, and Z. I just want to live and, and let other people live. But 
if this stuff continues, if all this stuff starts becoming known, right? I feel like we're in this this great awakening, no question, right? I mean, I listen, I don't know how many of you are paying attention to what's happened over the past four or five years. Man, I'm a different person today than I was back in 2019. 2019, I was only by, hey, Parasite's my favorite movie. It's a masterpiece. Now I'm like, oh, listen, I love this movie, but also there's a planet up there. I can't even believe myself that I'm here. I mean, for most people, I tell them, like my boys down when I play volleyball, I try to explain some of this. And I say, watch the video. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to watch what I just showed you, and you tell me. You tell me that what you're looking at, how, can you explain it? You can't. You can't explain it. It's right there. Now, watch. I think he goes, I think he goes really fast, because th- if you run this thing at full, if you run this thing at full speed, it moves fast. It's, it's not like going, it, it's going quick. He's got this thing slowed down. So if we actually just let it play, you're going to see it. Let's see. I'm, I'm going to roll it. Okay, watch, watch, watch. Here you go. Can you see this? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move it myself, and you're going to see it. Okay, here it comes, right? Do you see it? I'm going to hit pause there for a second because that's really, guys, that's, hold on. Let me, that's right there. I mean, you can't even make that thing any more obvious, right? Craters, line, I don't know what the hell it is, okay? But here's the deal. So watch. So as I move it, watch it move. Ready? I'm going to go back. Okay, watch it rotate. Watch. It's going to be dark, but you're going to have to look. First of all, it's going to show up. There it is. Watch it rotate. Okay, it's rotating. Do you see it rotate? See it rotate? See it rotate? And then it disappears. Sun takes care of it. One more time. Watch. Do you see it? Do you see what I'm talking about? It's a ball. It's moving almost away, right? It's rotating away. Do you see that? What in the hell am I looking at? It's almost like, look, it's almost like a a movie screen or some shit, right? Like, and then you see something kind of go by, like there's a little something like a cloud. I don't know what that is, but do you guys see what I'm saying? Look, look, it's rolling. Do you see that? I am just scrubbing the time. I'm moving like five seconds and you can see it roll. Do yes, yes. Yeah, I don't, listen, I know, Lizzie, a hundred percent. That's the thing is, I don't even care if you guys tell me. I just want you to be honest, and you're just like, what is this shit? I can't answer it. I don't know. I'm just telling you, that's freaky as hell. You talk about MT gets freaky? That shit's scary. What if we... If that's real, what if, what if, what's our world? Where do we even exist? That's that I'll be at AMC tomorrow watching Civil War. So <laughs> that's the key here. Can I say that? The key here is to always be interested in... But here's the reality, too. Can we, what if this thing is here to do some damage to us? Can we do anything about it? Can I tonight do anything other than go to bed? There's nothing I can do to stop this. I can't go up into the skies, unfortunately I'm not a superhero, and smash the planet. Like Superman smashes it to atoms and it it goes, I don't know what to tell you. I'm telling you one more time and then then I'm going to, a couple questions and we'll roll out of here. There it is. Watch slow. I'm moving it fast. You got to look in the gray. It's because I'm moving it. You can see it move. Just so you know, there it is, right? Boom, 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 rolling like a bowling ball, right? Rolling on a northeast, if you look at this thing, and it almost looks like it's going away from us. But I think that has to do with how the light hits it. So if the light doesn't hit it, you can see, look, it's not, it's, you don't see it. Look, see, it's gone. But when the light hits it just right, boom, right? Boom, 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 boom. It's right there. It's there. It's right there. Crazy. Bruce Willis, you remember that movie? What was the one? Moonfall. They said the moon was like an alien base. I don't know, man. Maybe some. I hope not. I don't know if they listen. I mean, I believe in God. I'm not gonna. I'm of course I do. I'm I'm a, I'm a religious. It, I grew up Catholic. I'm a religious person in that I definitely believe in God and I try to live a life while others might say I don't, which is bullshit. If you knew me. Um, you know, oh, he's mean. Oh, I'm sorry. That so so what? That's not that's not like I'm not hurting somebody. He's saying Monkey Man's a piece of shit film. I hated it. That's not hurting anybody. I mean, Deb Patel will be fine. You'll be fine. So you know, I'm talking about like actively making the world a worse place, going out and doing terrible things, terrible acts. Not saying a movie's bad. That's ridiculous. But of course, it's mean. Oh, you're being so mean. You can't be mean, Weber. It's so mean of you. That's how we live in now. Shut up. Stop being a baby. Stop being a little wuss. I I mean, I hope so, Lizzie. And listen, ultimately, let's just say there's a lot of rabbit holes you guys can go down. You have no idea how many rabbit holes you can go down. 
Um, there's a great channel that I like to watch from time to time called My Lunch Break. And there's a lot of guys doing this, but he's very good. He goes through history and looks at buildings and what we're told, the narrative, and then destroys it. Because if you really look at some of the stuff we're told, it doesn't make sense. The timeline isn't right. There's something wrong with the timeline we're presented, right? I don't know what's real and what's not. I mean, I believe certainly things are real. I'm not going to pretend like we don't live. I believe we, we obviously, I don't believe we're in some kind of matrix because I, like I said, I'm tapping the desk, my computer, you guys are here. I've got my seltzer water. These things are, ha I mean, granted, it could all be in our mind, like that terrible movie hypnotic with, oh my God, you guys hypnotic with Ben Affleck, the $60 million turd um, that destroyed a studio. But, I don't think that's what we live in. We live in some, I don't, I mean, I believe we, we live maybe a realm. I mean, earth could be a realm and there's multiple realms. I do believe this, and this is crazy. And since, since we got the eclipse, I'll go a little longer tonight. I don't know if you guys have ever watched, have you ever heard of mud fossil universal U university? Okay, here it is. I'm going to show you guys. Since we're already doing this, we've done our movies. Let's have a little bit of fun. I'm going to go to Mud Fossil. If you haven't ever seen Mud Fossil University, um, oh, man, you know what's interesting? They actually are blocking it. Like, it's hard to find. The, what do they call that? Shadow banning? Okay, here it is. Have I ever showed you Mud Fossil Dragons? Oh, shit. Wait till you see this. You guys are going to be like, what? I'm, the, you know the crazy thing about Mud Fossil Dragons? is that they, they're making it so you can't find it. Maybe we went through a black hole. We could have. <laughs> Abrasive, that's fair. Yeah, whatever. So what? Um, okay, hold on. Watch, watch, watch. What, this thing, and then you then you. This is going to blow your mind, what I'm going to show you, but I need you guys to understand that once you start to see this shit, you go, what? You, like, like, show you the planet. Whatever that is. Yeah, probably. That's not an asteroid, though, Nomis. That's like a planet. That shit's not an asteroid. That thing's got, like, craters in a line. Okay, if you, if you have not seen this, you guys are going to be like, whoa. You're going to have two whoa moments tonight on MMT Gets Freaky. The After Hours show. It's like an After Hours club. All right, here we go. Watch. So this is in Morocco, right? Let me see if he zooms in. Ah, shit. Let's see. He's done this so many times, i got to find the right video. Okay, here we go. This is it. Okay, watch it. Okay, this is in Morocco. He's going to take a... Okay, this is Google Earth. And this is... Listen, I'm just, once you see it, you can't unsee it. That's what I'm going to tell you. Watch. I'm going to move forward. I don't even know how I found this guy, but... Okay, so right here... Oh, man, this is hard. He doesn't have... Okay, let me zoom in. Okay, he is pointing... Now, listen, this is this is going to freak you out, and I know you're not going to want to go here, but I need you to go here with me. Just will you do that for me? Okay. He's going to point to northern Morocco, right, the top of Africa, and he's going to point to what appears to be a giant fossilized dragon. Now, I know you're, whoa, okay, this is it. I'm getting out of here. Fine. Here's what he's going to tell you. He is big on biology. He is saying what you're looking at is literally like the runoff in the sand, you guys see the red there? That is literally like the fire that is shot from a dragon. Now, listen, please listen to me. You're going to say dragons aren't real. Well, of course, not now. But here's what I'm going to tell you. Why does every civilization on planet Earth have stories of dragons? Right? You know, it's an awesome movie. If you haven't watched it, go watch Reign of Fire. It's almost like I feel like they're telling us something with Reign of Fire. Do you ever, Reign of Fire's maze balls. I love that movie. You've got Christian Bale, you've got Matthew McConaughey, and you've also got who's the other, the third guy. There's three. The two of them alone. That's a badass movie. I love Ring of Fire. So, check this out. He says that's a giant dragon. Now, listen, listen, listen. That means that if this son of a bitch was a real dragon, and let's just assume it was. Assume that we're talking about this is a fossilized dragon. Because there's the mouth. He's going to point. You see the mouth kind of going like this, right? And if you look back, it looks like along his throat, he's talking about like a dragon had these flutes, right? You see on all the pictures of dragons that were, of course, you know, myth that were told that there's these the scales, right? Dragon scales. If you look at the topography, there are scales. And then if you look at the bottom, do you see the green? Uh, hold on. Let me roll back. You There's the feet, the legs. Okay. Here he's going to zoom in on the head. That's the head opening up 
and this is the throat, and it's unloading a whole bunch of venom. Do you see all he said? All this runoff right here is venom. This is mud fossil. You can go watch the whole video. I'm just gonna try to explain it to you. So here's the thing that this is what drives this is what I didn't understand this at first, and now I finally did. I don't think he explains it either. Is that when you look at this thing, could this be a giant dragon? Because look, he says this is by biology. This is burnt like almost like lava or you know, venom. This is a venomous look to the to the ground. So the venom leaked out onto the earth and created this desert. Okay, so as you look at it from from up far, and he says there's a giant fish underneath. That one's a little I see it, but I understand. But the dragon itself, if you watch his video, you're gonna see it. So the entire I don't know if you can you see my pointer here. The entire north uh, side of Africa is a dragon. The entire like portion. Now again, if that were a real, if were dragons were real, that dragon is the size of literally half the United States. Now, this is where I need you to understand why this dro- this finally clicked for me. It finally, finally clicked for me. I said, there's no way that a dragon could be that big. And I'm not saying it's real, but let's just assume. Let's assume that that is a fossilized dragon at the top of Africa. And there's also a couple actually in the United States. And it forms essentially the entire East Coast. I could. There's another video he has. I'll go into it another night. But. You say to yourself, there's no way that a dragon could be that big. A dragon, if, if, if first of all, dragons aren't real, right? But second of all, if the dragon were that big, as big as Northern Africa, how could it live on Earth? It's it's literally like one fifteenth the size of Earth or one twentieth. Here's where my mind was blown. That if that is a giant dragon in Northern Africa, then is there a possibility then what we've been told we live on is a fuck ton bigger than we've been told. Because that's the only way it works, is if you all of a sudden say Northern Africa is a giant fossilized dragon, but it doesn't make sense. There's not enough space for the dragon to exist on Earth. What if where we live is a lot bigger than we've been told? I go back to The Village, and it's bringing it back to movies. Remember The Village. M. Night Shyamalan, one of his better films, certainly the concept. You look at that film. Remember, they were told we got to stay inside the village, set in like the 1700s, 1800s, right? I haven't watched that movie since it came out. But I remember being blown away by it because the whole time you think, I'm going to ruin it because it's it's old. They, they all think they live in this village, and they're told you can't leave. You can't go beyond the woods. You cannot leave. You've got to stay here. What happens at the end? Finally, I think it's, isn't it Joaquin Phoenix? Or who is it that has to go? He's in the movie. He's got to go save somebody. Somebody gets injured and he has to go out and get help. So he goes and he ends up jumping the wall. It turns out they're in modern day. So their families had put them in the woods and created a colony that was untouched by civilization. So to the people that lived on the colony, they thought they were back in the 1700s, 1800s, whereas if you hop the fence, you're in the year 2004, whatever year that was out. Okay, so here's what I'm asking you. Could we live in some kind of situation where we are in a box? And granted, I know you've been told there's a globe. I get it. I'm not even saying flat earth. I don't know. Maybe the globe's a lot bigger. Is there a situation where we are the village? We are in an area, and if we were to only jump the fence, we'd be like, holy crap, what is this place? Because I, because that way, this dragon thing makes sense. Because first of all, if the dragons were real, they could never exist on a planet this big. They're too big. They would, they would. You'd look up in the sky and it'd be the whole sky. You'd be like, oh my god, there's a dragon. And if you look up and it'd be like bigger than Godzilla. It'd be bigger than God. You'd be like, my god, that's huge. So again, what if Gulliver's Travels? What if we live in something that's way bigger, but we're only allowed to stay here, the village? I know I'm blowing your minds tonight. Is there anybody else who does this shit? Nobody. Nobody does this shit. <laughs> Screw you, Sully's dreams. Nobody else does. But see, right? Okay, here's the thing. All I'm asking for is this, guys. I'm asking you to at least go there. You can, you can, but here's the thing. You can't tell me I'm wrong because here's the problem. You're going to say, well, look at the earth. Have you ever gone up in a spaceship and looked at the Earth? Have you ever in your life gone up and looked at the globe? No, you haven't. I haven't either. Nobody you know has either. You've been told. Imagine if I told you Monkey Man was a great movie. (laughs) I love how we're able to bring it all the way back to the beginning. 
you would maybe believe me. And then you'd watch it and go, no, he's, he's 100% right. It's terrible. And then you'd say, I don't let. So that's all I'm asking. Is it possible that what we live on is not what we're told? And I don't even know what to tell you. After, and it, once you go down the rabbit hole and you start seeing giant dragons and planets and shit, you're just like, I don't know what to say. I just know that tomorrow I'll wake up and do my thing, hit the gym, whatever. But, but I'm always going to have that question. And I think here's what I'm going to ask. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Whenever we pass on to the next realm, whatever that is, and I'm, there's got to be something, whatever it is, I'm going to ask you to say, when you're told this is what it is, you'll be like, God, you know, Weber wasn't totally right, but he was close. <laughs> that's all that's all I want. If we run into each other, just come up and say, you know, I know you didn't have it nailed down, but you were there. You were in the ballpark. Everyone else was thinking this. You were close. You were going places where people wouldn't go. That's the key. You have to be able to go somewhere you don't normally want to go, and it's uncomfortable, and you, I don't know. But then you start to go, well, actually, I get it. Because, again, I go back to dragons. I go back to folklore. Why do you think these stories exist? Why do you think they've been handed down for centuries, millennia? Because they might have been real. And what's to say that maybe that wouldn't return? That's Reign of Fire. Go back and watch Reign of Fire. Great movie. I'm not going to ruin. I'm not going to solely. I won't ruin that movie. Reign of Fire is amazing. They go down. They're digging through the earth. They're not going to ruin the whole film, but they go down drilling in London, and they accidentally open up an area where they were caged, and then the the dragons come out and they take over the world and destroy the planet. And I'm like, you remember how they talk about predictive programming with Hollywood? When I watch Reign of Fire back in 2000, whatever that was, four, three, two, whatever, somewhere in there. I never dreamed that I'd be on a stream in 2024 going dragons might have been real. Like, I'd be, what? what? That guy's crazy. What that guy do? Does he just do drugs all day? I, I, guys, by the way, I, I, was, I have another confession to make. Uh, you probably, you're not going to believe this, but I'm going to tell you because I don't lie. I have never touched drugs in my life. Never. Zero. Zero. Not even gotten high. So that would be frightening. Have I had a beer or two or was a, almost a raging alcoholic in college? Of course. I mean, I was a, an idiot. I mean, I can't believe I'm alive, some of the things I did. But I've never touched hardcore dr drugs other than, you know, prescription shit. So but, so, but if I were to talk to myself back in 2024 and watch this stream and say, this is you in the future, like, that guy lost his fucking mind. And it's fine. I get how some of you might say that. But the problem is I'm presenting you with stuff that is unfortunately there. You know, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, God's coming to, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, man. <laughs> I, maybe, maybe, maybe. Um, all right. I'm just, no, what? No, Duvall, don't say that. I don't want to have to ban you for a comment. <laughs> Let me make sure I didn't miss any, 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 uh, super chats. No, no, get ready. I got to get ready for the world to end tomorrow. If there's a, let's remember this. If there's a giant earthquake in, in California rolls into the ocean, just tell everybody I had a good life. It was a good life. I did everything that I basically wanted to. Was I the richest man? No. But did I get to live a life that I would not change a single thing? Yes. Then what else do you want? Because I think some people put this value on money, right? It's like, oh, I've got to have this and that and the other. Ultimately, you have to have a roof over your head. You got to have a bed. You got to have a shower. You got to have a place to cook your food. You got to have a car that drives. You know what I mean? You don't need these other things. Sure, I'd love to live in a $200 million house with a view of the entire Los Angeles area, like Stark's mansion, but you don't need it. I think people get really caught up in that, right? They need these things. Sure, I need my football shirts. No question. I, but those make me happy. You have to have something in your life that makes you happy. And I know I rail on geek culture sometimes. People collect like figures and stuff. I, mean, I collect soccer jerseys slash football shirts. So I can't, you know, I'm a hypocritical. I'm not going to lie. And I, by the way, did you guys notice what movie's up there tonight? New movie. And then, and then we're on. What movie's up there? Guys, this is a good one. I had to find this. This was not easy. This was one I had to actually hunt down. Do you guys see it? There's not many of these out there. So when you look at it, you only see, thank you. Tonight is Columbus crew. It's the eclipse Jersey. You've got it's MLS, my hometown, Columbus, Ohio. Love the crew. Of course, MLS champions last year. And this is, uh, this is a nice one. I love the Adidas. I love, I love any kind of authentic. They're cut really tight. Nope. It's not Saltburn. It's not Saltburn. 
It's it's your good guess. It's up there. That's not one of them. There's a new one up there. There's a new one. Ah, someone already saw it. Uh, Sham was the first. Paddington 2. Paddington 2 is on the wall. That is an FYC screener. They didn't send any of those out. Remember, Paddington was a Weinstein film, and it was kind of in between. So this is Studio Canal. Like, it didn't even have a major studio put that out, because remember, Weinstein was a disaster at that time, so they didn't know what to do with it. So they, But I found it, and I go, I got it. That has to go. Paddington 2. By the way, I was on it way before David Elric. I mean, I was talking about Paddington 2 way before that motherfucker. So just remember that. I'm not Johnny come lately with this shit. I was first on Good Time and Paddington 2 and Ghost Story and name a movie. It was first to tell you Bo's Afraid is a shit film. All of these films, Moneyball's up here. And 1970, I just like some, the covers are all good. I don't have a movie up there. I don't like the, at least the cover. I mean, I don't love everything everywhere, but that cover's badass. I've got the Batman down here. I got two Batmans up there, actually. The red one's down here. You can barely see it. It's right below where you see Paddington. And then Tar. I had two Tars. I only have one up now. And then this is, you guys ever see, the, I never pointed out this one. This is Creed 3. Do you see, this is Michael B. Jordan holding his gigantic ass camera. I go, that's cool. And then Empire of Light, because I love, you know, it's listen, Empire of Light's an MMT like classic does, because it's the textbook example of a film that is technically flawless in the screenplay is not great. But that's why it's up there, right? Everything's in Oppenheimer. That's a rarity, too. That's an Oppenheimer screener. Very rare. I had to actually reach out to Universal for that one because they, they, they were like, we didn't make many of those. Can I please have one? I'll put it on the wall. They'll be fine. We'll send it to you. Guys, if the world ends tomorrow, uh, listen, it's been fun. Thanks for being here and at least going there on a lot of these things that I know at times are uh, the weird. I'm, I'm not, shit, the shit's weird. But the world's weird. And uh, be weird. And don't be afraid to be weird. Tomorrow we're going to talk about Civil War. I'm going to see it, assuming the world doesn't end. If the world ends, no stream tomorrow. I mean, it's pretty simple. If the world continues to rotate, then we, or revolve, whatever the hell you want to call it. We will do a stream tomorrow because I'm going to see Civil War in IMAX. The stream will be live. We'll do it live. We'll do it live at like 930 tomorrow. One of those late, true midnight movie talks. And it'll only be about Civil War 15, 20 minutes. Nothing else unless the eclipse does something crazy. And then, of course, all bets are off. We'll also talk about, I believe, the Maxine trailers tomorrow. We'll try to throw that on. So there'll be a special edition Monday. Anything we have, like a big night, a big film. Like Civil War is a big film. I mean, is it going to open at like 50 million? No, but people are talking about this film. I'm going to tell you why I'm a little bit hesitant about Civil War before I go into it tomorrow because I need to disclose that. I'll talk about it on the stream for sure tomorrow. I'm not in love. I'm not enamored with the idea of a film that is coming out that is going to further divide us. I don't like that as as someone myself, you know, if I were a director writing a film, I wouldn't even make this film. I wouldn't. That's my personal decision. That said, I'm going to leave that out as much as possible to see how Garland does with that topic. I don't believe a lot of people want to see this film for that very reason. They don't want to have a film that has Americans killing each other in the street and factions of Florida and California going up against, you know, D.C. and the federal government. If this is predictive programming, just give me a break. So I'm going to see uh, there's two things going on there. Right. And I think that's the key when we talk about this film tomorrow is is being able to juggle the my uncomfortability uncomfortability with the topic and just what I make this film versus how well is it made and is it strong in what it tries to do that's, I know that's weird right so I got to figure out how to balance that and I'm going to talk about that tomorrow because that is an issue that we deal with in the movies uh, is, is, is how can I figure those two things out and still be objective ultimately it will be and I, hopefully the film is good uh, and I hope it will be impactful as it were so we'll talk about that tomorrow about 9 30 on the stream just get the alerts and we'll be live from the city of angels assuming the world does not end everybody you guys rock steve thank you yeah don't yeah exactly you guys are you guys are awesome all of you are cool and just remember this be open-minded and go watch Mud Fossil Dragons. When this is over, go to Mud Fossil, find his dragons, and watch him talk about that gigantic fucking dragon in Morocco. And then you're going to, here's what you're going to say as I get ready to leave. You're going to say, I see what he's talking about. And that's what I'm showing you here with that planet. 
all I want you to do is I see what he's talking about. And then you go, okay, good. I'm good. I can now go here. Whether it's, whether you believe it or not, I just want you to go there. You can't just say no. Can't just say that's closed. Can't do that. Open, open, open. Just like we're going to do tomorrow with civil war, open-minded. And we'll discuss it tomorrow live from the city of angel. I'm out. I'm going to bed. Peace out. Unless the world ends and then we're all gone, but it was a good life. Just like you had, right?